次的训诫说，主的娘妈她不教授我们的是唱诵主的圣名。Another of the duties of a king was to make sure that everyone executed their duties according to their prescribed vana and ashram. 君主的第二这样职责是确保臣民们都完按根据自己的 vana 和 ashram 履行规定的职责。If somebody would act just like in Srimad Bhagavatam, we read how Maharaj Pariksit was traveling route around his kingdom and he saw someone dressed as a king who was obviously a sutra. So when there are anomalies in the state like this, it is the duty of the ruler to correct these situations and to correct the person and to bring him to his proper position. And so Maharaj Prithu was expert to make sure that everyone performed their proper duties, the brahmanas, the, the duties of a brahmana. So Prithu Wang was very good to 嗯，每个臣民履行各自的职责，婆罗门要履行婆罗门责任。A brahmana is not supposed to take up service from others, but in the Kali Yuga we see all the brahmanas they're all doing taking up jobs serving. 一个一位婆罗门是不应该去呃为别人去做服务的，但是我们发现呢，在他们年代呢，这些婆罗门呢，他们都去上班工作。So therefore, it is said that in the Kali Yuga, Kalo Sudra Sambhavaha, that in the Kali Yuga, everyone is a Sudra or Lord. So, in Kali Yuga, everyone is a Sudra or Lord. So, in Kali Yuga, everyone is a Sudra or Lord. So, in Kali Yuga, everyone is a Sudra or Lord. So, in Kali Yuga, everyone is a Sudra or Lord. So, in Kali Yuga, everyone is a Sudra or Lord. So, in Kali Yuga, everyone is a Sudra or Lord. So, in Kali Yuga, everyone is a Sudra or Lord. So, in Kali Yuga, everyone is a Sudra or Lord. So, in Kali Yuga, everyone is a Sudra or Lord. So, in Kali Yuga, everyone is a Sudra or Lord. Because Maharaj Prithu was such an expert king, he made sure everyone followed their duties and did their prescribed work. The Brahmana's duty is to study the scriptures and teach the scriptures and to worship the deities and teach other people to worship the deities. Brahmana is allowed to accept charity and he's allowed to also give. So those are the prescribed duties of a Brahmana. They're not expected to do any other kind of work. And similarly, the Vaishya, his duty is to care for the cows and to do farming and trading. And the Sudra's duty is simply to serve others. And so in the Kali Yuga, practically everyone is Sudra and Lord. So Maharaj Prithu was very careful to make sure everyone followed their duties according to their proper qualifications. The four divisions of society is described in Bhagavad Gita. Lord Krishna says, Chatur Varnam Maya Shisham Guna Karma Vibhaga Shama. Lord Krishna said, I am the creator of these divisions of society. And I created them according to quality and work, Guna and Karma. Krishna in the Buddha Fan Gur said, the world is a part of But unfortunately, the whole system of Vana and Ashram has become degraded, and people think it simply by birth. 
by Jenma, nothing else. So within our Krishna consciousness movement, we don't designate people as Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, or Sutra. Everyone is simply devotee. Everyone should be taught to work for Krishna and in this way make their life better. But in the times of Maharaj Prithu, people were taught to follow the Vamnas and Ashrams and in this way make their life better. Then Srila Prabhupada discusses how uh, the Parampadam can mean also entering into the Brahma Jyoti. The impersonal Brahma Jyoti is also the lotus is also the energy of the Lord, it's spiritual energy. So the impersonalists, they achieve the lotus feet of the Lord by entering into the Brahma Jyoti. So although they enter into the Brahma Jyoti, they, 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 they cannot remain there forever. Because in the Brahma Jyoti, there are no activities, there, are, there is no relationship, there is just simply the oneness of the impersonal Brahma Jyoti. So the impersonalists may enter to the Brahma Jyoti, but they cannot remain in that condition. And after some time, they again come back to the material world. So the impersonalists and Srila Prabhupada's purport quotes that relevant verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam which describes how the impersonalists come back again to the material world due to their impure intelligence. Because they have no knowledge of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they don't get entered into any of the Vaikuntha planets. They simply enter into the Brahma so they enter into the Brahma Jyoti for some time, but because there's no activity, the nature of the soul is that the soul needs activities. And in search of activity, the souls will leave the Brahma Jyoti and come back to the material world. Although they, they have achieved liberation, they do not find satisfaction there. They simply find relief from the material existence. So impersonal liberation is what called Sayuja Mukti, one enters into that Brahma Jyoti, but there's nothing, there's just no activity. So the soul is not satisfied in that condition. So 
And therefore, they'll come back to the material world and again take up some kind of material activities in the form of welfare activities, working for the benefit of the giving the material benefits, sometimes making a, a, a kitchen or an old people's home or building a hospital or a mundane school. And so they have renounced the material world. They have given up the material world. They have entered into the spiritual existence. But they could not remain in that void, in that condition, without any activity. And they come back to the material world and take up welfare activities. They do not know what is real spiritual activity. So that only the devotees know through the practice of bhakti yoga. They know how to fully satisfy the soul by spiritual activities. So Maharaj Prithu, he was a devotee. He was engaged in devotional service. He had taken shelter at the lotus feet of the Lord. He was able to fully engage himself in devotional activities and to remain fully satisfied in the service of the Lord. But the other impersonalists and the Mayavadas and the Buddhists and so on, they renounce the world, but again they take up some kind of welfare activity, material activities. Because they have no information about the Supreme Personality of God. So in this way, Srimad Bhagavatam is directing all of us to understand the Lord and to engage in His service. We don't want to just simply be absorbed in a oneness, in this oneness of the the impersonal Brahmajyoti. Although there is no suffering there, there, there is no real spiritual happiness. Spiritual happiness is achieved only by engaging in the Lord's service. Alright, any questions on this? In devotional service, uh, through association with devotees, what's the symptom that sometimes uh, we still have uh, a symptom of uh, impersonalism. What are the symptoms that we in still dealing, have? In dealing with other devotees, sometimes uh, uh, we are some, somewhat like impersonalists. Well, 
sometimes we may use that term impersonalism without fully appreciating the implication. But impersonalism means simply there's no activity in relation to the Supreme Lord. They have no taste for chanting the holy names of the Lord or for hearing the glories of the Lord. They want to stop activities. Right, we often talk, hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. So the impersonalist attitude is to stop activities. Hear hear no evil. 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 Uh, evil. Bad things, bad things, bad things. Uh, 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 the impersonalist way is negation of activities. Uh, so, of course, it's wrong to hear material topics. It's wrong to discuss the mundane affairs of the material world. And we don't encourage devotees to be watching mundane movies. Here in Malaysia, you know, they have, they used to have a program some years ago, now it's of course different, but some years ago that every Saturday afternoon they would have Tamil movies. <laughs> now, now, huh? now every day, man. Every Afternoon, people will be at home because they're having Tamil movies on television at that time. So that kind of thing, it, it, it doesn't help our devotional creeper. It doesn't nourish our attraction to Krishna to watch some Monday movies. So the impersonalist is they will they will not watch these things. But a devotee he will want to absorb himself in Krishna consciousness. And the impersonalists, they just simply want to be away, to be in silence, to be in solitude, to be alone. And what what are they doing? They're contemplating the divine. But they have no real information about who is the Supreme. 
And they simply think, ultimately, there's only the oneness, there's only the Brahman, the spiritual energy. And what is that spiritual energy? Oh, it's a bright light, all pervading light. So people want to just simply contemplate that light. That is the impersonal way. But in contrast, the devotee wants to engage in activities of hearing and chanting. Now sometimes also impersonalists, they also chant. They also read the Bhagavad Gita and they also do chanting of Hare Krishna. But their motive is to enter into that oneness. They're, they're not thinking that this is my eternal engagement. They're thinking that this chanting or this uh, Bhagavad Gita reading, it will bring me to the point where I can become God and I can give up all of these activities. Uh, Devotee understands Jivarsva Swarupahai Nitya Krishna Das, that he's eternally the servant of Krishna. We are practicing Sanatana Dharma, eternal religion. But the impersonalists are thinking that their devotion, their chanting, their worshipping, it's, it, it's to the means of becoming God. And one day they will give up these activities. That's the difference with the devotee and the impersonal. Maharaj, can I ask a question? So, is it possible if we have not achieved perfection in this life, in the next life, we, we, we are born in another planet or in a different universe and continue our devotional practice there? Oh, is the earth much more conducive for practicing Krishna consciousness because Chaitanya Prabhu is for the Sankirtan movement? Yes, the earth is the best place. It said even the demigods, they want to take birth here in the Kali Yuga because it's the easiest place to get perfection, to go back to God. Hmm? If you take birth in the higher planets, in the heavenly planets, then there's a lot of sense gratification there. It makes it very difficult to be serious about devotional service. But the earth is situated in the middle of the universe. It's not too heavenly or too hellish. It's considered the best situation for practicing devotional service. And simply by devotional service, one can go back to God directly from this place. 
，它既不是太太呃处在天堂这样感官享乐地方，也不是太地般的境地。所以在地球上修习 Krishna 之觉，甚至在一世就可以回到神手那里。But whatever progress you make in this life, we will never lose that. It's to our eternal benefit. In the next life, we go on from that point. Mm, Bhagavad Gita describes two situations. One practices yoga for a short time. And one practiced for a long time, but still not successful. So the one who practiced for a long time, he would take birth in a family of devotees, and then from his birth, they immediately have the opportunity to do devotional service. 佛教上的描述的有两两类的失败的灵性主者，一一类是短时间修行掉下来的，一类是长时间修行之后掉下来的。那么长时间修行之后掉下来的。Mm, but someone didn't practice for very long. Uh, they may they may go to the higher planets and satisfy all their material desires, and they will come come back and take birth in a in a wealthy or aristocratic family, where they can quickly again take up devotion of sin. 嗯，短时间休息的呢，他们会，呃，在高等修学会投注在，呃，贵族家庭，然后他们去那里先满足他们的感感官之后再灵修。Okay. Any other question? Okay, so we'll finish here. Thank you. Shumad Bhagavatam ki. Shumad Bhagavatam ki. Shumad Bhagavatam ki. Hare Krishna, we'd like to thank His Holiness Maharaj for his um, morning Bhagavatam class. Next, Maharaj will be delivering his um, Bhagavad Gita class at 11.30 a.m. in the temple hall. Everybody is invited. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs>